well, I'm, I'm going to begin by asking, I mean, this script had been floating around for a while now, and I was just wondering what it was about the, the story of, of James Brown that just attracted you and appealed to you so much as a filmmaker. Um, well, the first thing when I read the script is I stripped away the fact that it was James Brown. Um, in many ways, this is a southern tale of, of, of a rise to fame. Um, and being a southerner, I immediately linked up to that. And, um, and I think ultimately so did Chadwick. But it was just an amazing central character that I had not come across. Even though he was real life, I approached it as as a completely invented character and how can we understand this man? And then I would say, okay, but it's James Brown, so we'll, we'll put on the James Brown after I figure out the central character. Yeah. And obviously, because Mick Jagger was a producer on the film, how kind of helpful was it having someone who had been there and done it and lived through that whole kind of era themselves and had kind of been such a huge figure themselves to kind of be so heavily involved in this project? Well, it was good for me because of the time he spent with Chadwick, um, you know, Mick and Chad both realized Chad had never performed with a microphone in hand in front of thousands, if not millions of people over five decades. So Mick, Mick and Chad spent a lot of time together. Mick would basically explain the mentality of a performer and why James did what he did and as a performer, how you manipulate an audience. And he gave Chad that insight into that, which brought a rich, richness to his work, which of course I appreciated. I was gonna say, I mean, the thing I love most about the film is the kind of the energy of it and the whole kind of the kind of spirit that it kind of really lived off the kind of vitality of James Brown's music. How important was it for you to kind of to use his sound and that kind of funkiness <laughs> to kind of help inform the movie? Well, it was necessary. Ultimately, it, it would just be a shame if I had not. Um, there was a rhythm to James's life. There was a rhythm to his music. There was a rhythm to his performances there was a rhythm to his relationships and they all they all at the core of them had a desire to stay relevant and to keep people guessing he never wanted anyone to know what was next and I just brought that into the filmmaking I mean Chadwick is just incredible in in the lead role but I mean it was something of a gamble I suppose beforehand because he was still something of a, of a newcomer but uh, I mean, you must be absolutely thrilled to have someone like that sort of take on that lead role. Oh it's not easy. Oh my gosh, and, uh, and I knew the importance of not having, uh, for me it was important not to have a big mega star um, play James Brown because there would always be the element of seeing someone that you already knew very well, putting on some of the wigs that <laughs> James Brown's character must wear. It, it, it was a really fine line of keeping it from slipping into a parody. It must have been quite surreal at times when sort of directing Chadwick, but must have felt like you were directing James Brown with the makeup and the whole way he sort of oh, mannerisms. Chadwick and I had an absolute blast between setups and scenes. He would stay in character only in voice because he had to train his vocal cords to speak like James. So he couldn't go back to Chadwick. So it was, it, I did. I spent four months with Mr. Brown. <laughs> It's not bad. I was wondering, so, I mean, in terms of the whole talking to the camera, what do you think that brought to this movie? That that whole the, that kind of bringing that um, James Brown and having that kind of personal connection with the with the audience. Well, initially, when I decided to do that, it was a way of getting out information uh, in a different way than the normal biopic, where it's a reporter speaking to a camera or newspaper headlines swirling around about the rise. I didn't want to do that, and it just struck me that. Who else but James Brown would find a way to come back from the dead and butt into his own movie? But then when Chadwick started to, to practice breaking the fourth wall, I realized I had an opportunity to do something even deeper and to go into the mind of James, where each audience member thinks that they are the only person he's talking to and he's showing them his world in a singular way. And I just, I just was really thrilled how that turned out. I mean, it's, it's one element that adds to the kind of, there's a surrealistic edge to this movie, like, you know, when he's lying on the side after the boxing and he pictures that band come to life. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, was that quite, that must have given you quite a lot of creative and artistic license, because I imagine the biopic genre can be a little restricting at times. Was it quite nice to have that kind of surreal side to, to it? it? It didn't, it was second nature. I never once felt that I had to adhere to any biopic rules. In fact, I wanted to break every single one of them. Um, and it was exhilarating. Um, artistic license was taken, but 
most everything, if not everything, depicted in the film is completely accurate. James Brown was rounded up with other boys in Augusta and forced to box like that. So, yeah, but then we would take it further to get inside his brain and how he felt about those things. And, and, and I've also found that, that the kind of surreal edge and the fact he sp speaks to the camera almost, because I mean, he has got quite a lot of flaws and imperfections, you know, there's quite a few things he's done in his life that he's probably not too proud of. I was just wondering, do you think the fact that we all see it from his perspective, and in, in a sense, he was quite delusional at times, do you think that allowed for you to not kind of have to delve too deeply into them and, and explore that side and allow you to celebrate his, his life and music a little bit more? Yeah, well, I learned early, I realized early on that most people, unfortunately, if you say who was James Brown, they're going to immediately list his missteps. <laughs> That's human nature. Um, so I realized I had the responsibility in this film in the limited amount of time to portray things people didn't know about James. And once I led with that charge, it put into place when and where I would show the missteps that people already knew about. It gave it, gave it its own balance with that mindset in place. So just my, my final question is, if you had to make a, a biopic of anyone else in the world, whose life story fascinates you the most and whose life would you most like to bring to the big screen? You know, honestly, I, I don't think of characters that way. Um, I never would have been, if you told me I was going to make a biopic, I would say that there's no way I would do that. I am, however, about to do a movie with Sandra Bullock um, called Tupperware. And it's about the fascinating life of the woman that started the Tupperware party. Oh. There's a lot of psychology behind that. And, and that just shows you how I choose projects. Mm. Would you have ever thought I would want to make a movie about Tupperware? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. Yeah. Well, that sounds fascinating. I'd love yeah. to meet the person who invented Tupperware. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so yeah, much for your thank time you. today. Much appreciated. appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!